All locations have an equal chance for seeing thick fog, so prepare for what could be a slightly longer commute. When it's in your face, leave extra space. And as the fog begins to move away and the sun comes up, you might get lucky like Mike Hatcher in Loosedale. He captured what looks like a rainbow, but that is a fog bow. It forms just like a rainbow where you have sun on one side, raindrops in the other. But in this case, you have sun on one side and water droplets in the fog on the other. It creates a white arc through the sky. And if you look really closely at the shadow of his head, which is down in the lower part of the picture, you can see a halo, and that's known as a holy halo, or in German, it's a Helegen shine. Pretty interesting what water droplets and ice crystals can do. Fine, we've got Eglin Air Force Base, Keesler, we've got Hurlbert, and of course we have the Coast Guard. There are a lot of things happening in our skies, so what caused that boom? Start with the sky. Take a look at it this afternoon. I can tell you it was not weather. It was not weather. We had clear skies, but look at the Mississippi Sound, the Mississippi coast, south of Horn Island near the Chandelier Islands around 3 o'clock. A little blip on the radar, which normally would be rain, but it wasn't raining today. It turns out it was most likely the beginning of something called chaff, which is tiny pieces of metal, metal particles smaller than your hair, released from aircraft, and it's designed to hide the aircraft, typically from radar. This has been going on for decades and decades, something the military traditionally does, although they don't tell people when they do it. Now, here's the radar in the very sensitive mode, and those streaks you see right there, probably those little strips of metal released by the planes, but the strip tells you the plane was moving very fast as it released it. So most likely, in my opinion, this is not official, but in my opinion, most likely a sonic boom. And keep in mind, our air is very cold, it's very dense, that means sound travels farther, and so do sound shock waves. That's why we have a freeze warning for tonight. Temperatures already below freezing inland. I've got more on that in just a few minutes. Notice the pattern? It's sort of an up and down pattern we call undulations. It happens every once in a while in the clouds. Shia Pryor captured the same view, and depending upon the angle you look at them, you can actually see the ripples in the clouds, but you also see very long, gradual waves, ups and downs. And in Spanish Fort, Megan Edwards shot this view. She said her dad took the picture, and if you think of it upside down, it makes it easier to understand what's happening. Just imagine you're standing at the beach looking out over the ocean, and those waves coming in are due to the fact that the wind is blowing across the water and basically shearing across, and as it does, it lifts it up, the water goes down, it lifts it up again, the water goes down, so you get even waves. A pretty scene, pretty fascinating, and the air does that all the time. It's only when you have clouds do you notice it. But keep up with the weather in the days to come. Now, what about this photo? A viewer sent it as he was driving along Coy Smith Highway in northern Mobile County. You look out to the distance, you see the dark cloud, and you see these two little things coming from beneath the cloud. And from a distance, if you're driving and you glance, you'd say, tornadoes. It wasn't tornadoes. In fact, if you think about Northern Mobile County, think about Barry Steam Plant and think about those tall stacks they have, which we call smokestacks, but they actually give off mostly water vapor. Well, you're seeing the water vapor from those stacks rising straight up into the clouds and being absorbed. So you're seeing moisture meeting moisture, and the reason they're dark is because the cloud is making a shadow. Plus, it's a really small cloud. So today was not tornado weather. Now, as that front comes through, we might see a scene like this. We saw this yesterday. It's that season where thunderstorms begin to bubble in the afternoons and evening. Craig Robert shot that from Tanner Williams. And if you were studying it, you may have actually stopped and thought, wait a minute, those clouds are growing upward, whether you know it or not, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, and the wind around it is only about 30 miles an hour. So you take that turbulence and you try to pass the wind through it. The wind doesn't go through the cloud. It actually goes over those little ridges, and it turns out that's the way the wind flows around, just like if you put a rock in a stream, the water goes around it, it goes over it, and when the wind does that near a fast-growing cumulonimbus cloud, you get a cap cloud or a pileus cloud. So pretty interesting, pretty common as well. Very cool. I do believe Alan has some cool stuff. Oh, my. Yeah, you know, we had too much rain, and <laughs> I was just waiting for a nice dry day to kind of settle this debate that people have today. The humidity was on the way down, beautiful sunshine. But the debate involved rain, so we had to make it rain here at News 5. That's Nick Grondin, and that's a sprinkler. And we were setting up an experiment using a box to simulate a human head. And the experiment was, do you get wetter walking to a car when it's raining or running to a car when it's raining? We were going to actually count the raindrops that fell on a piece of cardboard. So experiment number one, we put Nick in action, fueled him up. There he goes. He's off. He's running. He is going to count the raindrops that fall on the box. Sounds simple, doesn't it? 
Okay, so now the second part was trickier because you have to walk to the car slowly. Needless to say, Nick got wet, but he was a good sport. But here's the problem. The boxes got too soaked to count the drops. Oh. That one's the run. This one's the walk. They're exactly the same, almost. It's a tie. I used to think walking through sprinklers was fun. <laughs> All right, so it's not a truly <laughs> scientific experiment, but the truth is it really depends on which way the wind is blowing because if the wind is at your back as you're uh -huh. running, it keeps the raindrops right on top of your head. It depends on how big your head is. That's the bottom line. Uh-huh. What you saying there? <laughs> I'm saying the forecast is next on News 5, Roseanne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my. That's a very square head, too. <laughs>